All right. So Ken and Alan, both are at Saint Yak. Alan does the same job I do here at CSCS uh, in supporting the users. Then David DeMarley, who is at Kitware, one of the many engineers working on the Paraview software. And Lee at Los Alamos are the people who have uh, de designed this particular uh, wiki tutorial. Version 4.1 is the most recent version, which I recommend. It's on the website as of uh, 10 days ago. This is the place to uh, download it. The tutorial is there at that particular address. Now, you've seen actually uh, a picture I have contributed here some years ago. This software comes from Sandia. Sandia is a place where they used to do, they still do, but they used to do defense related activities. So some of their big cases uh, is represented here, uh, supernova, but also tanks and, and so forth and other types of explosions. Paraview sits on top of VTK, which we have briefly mentioned this morning, uses a Paraview server in any case. And then we have the option to run multiple clients. The standard one is when we type Paraview, the Paraview client. PVPython is the Python client. It's a standard shell where we can do a lot of prototyping. The problem is that the 3D window is not interactive. So you cannot move your model around. It's, it's not very simple. And there's no graphical user interface attached to it. Similar to PVPython, there will be another tool called PVBatch. PVBatch is the tool we use with Slurm to execute the Python, uh, the Python scripts. Then there is a client for the web, which isn't quite mature yet. There's Catalyst, which is the in-situ visualization library for Python. And then of course, on top of this, you can always create custom animations using the Qt widgets for your graphical user interface and then running a server underneath. All right, our user interface, uh, we've seen it a few times already this today, uh, is a Qt interface where a lot of the panels are dockable, which means you can actually take a panel and move it outside of the main window. However, the main window itself, the main graphics window, remains into this uh, global panel here. We'll have multiple toolbars to, in fact, bring up some of those dockable panels. So, for example, selection, inspector, uh, comparative view inspector, those are things we will use to set up our views. I'll start very simply with uh, this creating a cylinder source and then we'll look immediately at what the uh, icons are here for manipulation of the view. So if I run my client here, uh, here I get, I start with an empty, an empty window and in fact, if you can see, if I remove all of those views, this is the display I have on the screen. And then at this point, I can instantiate, for example, the pipeline browser, which, would le which will let us see the visualization pipeline. Currently, I don't have any data loaded. I will load a particular uh, disk uh, actually, let, let me follow what the tutorial says here. Uh, I'm just one page earlier. It's the cylinder source. So 
I will source the cylinder there. But nothing happens because I'm missing an apply button. And that's all right. I will now from the view uh, menu, I will instantiate properties. And in the properties, as you can see, I have my apply button. OK. So there is my cylinder. It has default resolution, which is 6 for the number of faces. So you can see now, that as I increase those faces, uh, I now get a more rounder cylinder. Under this particular menu button here, I have multiple representation modes. So one of them uh, for sure is interesting is the surface with edges mode. And here we see that I have exactly my 32 faces on the cylinder. And the view uh, over here, I have all those different views which are predefined uh, orientation, as you can see. I have a particular uh, button here to select the center of orientation. See now, I'm, or I'm moving my rotation uh, around that particular point. I have a way to show the, 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 the axis triad here at the bottom of my screen and so forth. So there is my, my cylinder. It has no scale of field attached to it. Okay. In fact, we can look with the view information panel. We can look at the characteristics of this data set. It has 34 cells. It has 128 vertices. And it actually has two different arrays which are predefined for most geometric objects. One of, one of them is called normals. This is the vector normals to the, to the geometry. And then one of them called T chords. This is for texture coordinates. If you wanted to, instead of a cylinder, take a sphere and map on your sphere an image of the Earth, you could texture map your Earth into the sphere and then, then look at your geophysics data or your weather data. So if I were to color this with the uh, scalar field available, and this, under this particular menu here, you, as you can see, I have uh, my different options. So I have three different cases. The first case is a, is a solid color. The second case is all the data field related to cell variables. And they, are, they have a little cube icon. And then all the data fields associated with vertices. So if I color with normals, there it is. It doesn't really make much sense because the normal is a vector field. So in this case, we are coloring with the magnitude of the vector field. More interesting would be to actually show those vector normals. And this would be how we would do the first filter. So under filters here, uh, I can generate a glyph or I can also use this particular icon over here. See, it's already set up to, to use the normal vectors as vector. It will show a small arrow. And I just have to click on my particular view here. So this looks actually uh, correct. The normals on the top of the cylinder are pointing upwards. And all around the circle, for each of those little bands, which are individual polygons, I have a normal vector pointing in the direction perpendicular to the geometry. So here, everything looks, uh, looks correct.
There is undo and redo, which can come pretty handy, especially in the case of the camera undo and redo. Uh, you can look for those particular uh, icons. And the display properties, this is what I have demonstrated. We have quite a rich user interface. Now, supported types, uh, there are hundreds of them. And it will depend, Paraview will detect, using the file name that you, you're giving, detect which uh, file reader is more appropriate to read the data. In the case there is no reader available for your data, there's an option to import data directly into Visit using the Python interpreter. However, as this example points out here, this is full of VTK objects, which means you need to know the syntax of the VTK library. So this I would use as a last resort. And this is also typical of the type of help I would provide you if you want to go to this particular route to import your data. So now we're going to work with a re uh, data set that is used more often for demonstration. And this data set is called Disk Art Reference EX2. EX2 because this is the Exodus file format. The Exodus file format is one of the best library that Paraview supports because there is a convention between the two organizations to support each other's software. So you can show that this is uh, very well uh, supported. I will delete here what I have already done. And one simple way to delete things is actually go to the disconnect uh, button, which cleans up completely the pipeline from the existing uh, visualization. So here's my disk art file. Now, here's something important to note. These are all the variable names available in your data set. And Paraview gives you the choice to only load some of them. Now, for the demo here, we can just load every, every, every one of them. And you can just simply click here on this particular button to accept those, uh, those choices. Here's the, pardon me? Yeah, the yeah I, I'll, I'll get there. The files, oh, actually, it's on this page. Actually, if you go to that address where the Paraview tutorial is given on the wiki, there's also a link to the, to the data set. At CSCS on Iger, I have, lo I have located this under the project directory Paraview data version 4.1. So this, and what I could do is make uh, under the course directory here, and the data, I can make a simple.